The following program contains violence, disturbing imagery, nudity, and the program is rated TV MA NSFW OMFG GAF TTV BYGAS. It is unsafe for epileptics. It kills lab rats. Seriously. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to another episode of Three Geeks Flicks Trailer Break. Just a fair warning, this is the Red Band Trailer Edition Trailer Break of Deadpool. As always, I'm joined with the muse, Justin Kyle. Say hello, everyone, Justin. Hello, everyone. Yes, and I'm the tech, Mitchell Wright. We're going to get right after it. Here is the 2016 February 12th release movie, the trailer for it. The Red Band trailer. Deadpool. Enjoy. Hey, yeah, I want to shoot. It's kind of lonesome back here. A little help here. Oh. Excuse me. Woo. Dopinda. Pool. Dead. Why the fancy red suit, Mr. Pool? Oh, that's because it's Christmas Day, Dopinda. And I'm after someone on my naughty list. You're probably thinking, this was a superhero movie, but that guy in the suit just turned that other guy into a fucking kebab. Surprise, this is a different kind of superhero story. To tell it right, we gotta take you back before I squeeze this ass in spandex. Mr. Wilson, you've recently been diagnosed with terminal cancer. We can fight this. What if I told you we can cure you and give you abilities most men only dream of? I'd say that you sound like an infomercial, but not a good one, like Slap Chop, more Shake Weighty. If I never see you again, know that I love you. When I'm finished, your mutated cells will heal anything. But you still think we're making you a superhero? We're making you a super slave. Oh, come on. You gonna leave me all alone here with Jose Canseco? Whatever they did to me made me totally indestructible and completely no. Unfuckable. You you look like the inside of other people's assholes. I didn't ask to be super, and I'm no hero. But when you find out your worst enemy is after your best girl, the time has come to be a fucking superhero. <laughs> ah, right up Main Street. Hear the music. We can't allow this, Deadpool. I don't have time for your X-Men bullshit, Colossus. Besides, nobody's getting hurt. That guy was up there before we got here. Knock, knock, open I played a lot of roles. Damsel in distress ain't one of them. Time to make the chimmy fucking changas. Have you seen this man? I never say this, but don't swallow. Shit. Did I leave the stove on? Esco, give it to you. Yeah, you're way too much dude for me. That's why I brought him. I mean, that's why I brought her? Oh no, finish your tweet. It's not, that's fine, just give us a second. Go get her, tiger. Oh, I so pity the dude who pressures her into prom sex. All right, after soaking that in and enjoying its uh, explicitness, as I always do, I'm going to uh, nod to the muse here. Justin, give it to me. Okay, okay. Overall, I think this is a uh, probably the best marketed movie I've ever seen in my life. Um, everything from the posters, from the announcements, uh, right. from the little teasers, the TV spots, and the trailers, especially this trailer, I think it is perfect. Perfect. Almost, almost perfect. Almost we'll get perfect. into that in a second. But yeah, yes. Overall, great trailer. 
Okay, okay. Uh, overall uh, view of it, I completely agree. Now, looking at the uh, the cast, director, the director is Tim Miller. Uh, he was previously linked to Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, uh, which is a, a pretty epic movie. And this is, uh, Justin, you were saying this is his directorial debut? This is. This is the first movie he's actually full-on directed, yes. Very nice, very nice. And uh, going down the cast, uh, Marina Bakarin is Vanessa Carlisle, or Copycat, which I didn't know about the copycat part. will be interesting to see that. That is uh, Mr. Wade Wilson, or Mr. Poole, Deadpool, uh, his love interest. Uh, Gina Carano is Angel Dust. Ryan Reynolds, of course, is Deadpool, Wade Wilson. Ed Skarin is Ajax. T.J. Miller, who is his buddy, is Weasel. Uh, Rachel Sheen is Weasel's wife. Uh, going down, Stefan Kapikik. What did I just you say? Brutalize that again. I, I I can't say that name right. He is Colossus, and one of the things we talked about. I'm kind of glad that they uh, recast him because that guy looks like picture perfect on how Colossus should be. Right. And uh, Stan Lee apparently makes us a uh, a little cameo in the movie as well, and then. Uh, I'm going to brutalize her name, but I'm looking at it, folks. Brianna Hildebrand is Ellie Fifmeister. Do you even know what you just said? Uh, who is a Negasonic Teenage Warhead. It, you know, I can say Negasonic Teenage Warhead, but I can't say her actual character's name. Uh, what is the matter uh, with you? What can you do? And there's a million other people listed, but that is the uh, main meat and potatoes of the cast. Now, given that, looking at that cast-wise... I'm kind of glad that they uh, they went with some some fairly not large names. I, I like that uh, Marina. You know, we've seen her in a few things, and then of course Ryan Reynolds uh, is your biggest names in this movie. But uh, I just I, I tell you this this was the role of roles for Ryan Reynolds, and I'm so glad that they took the time and that they they listened to the fans and they let them make the movie for the fans and that they. They followed what he truly is, and and I, I hope, and from what I can see in the trailers, have, have captured that essence with this cast. Uh, Muse? Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, I think this was, and I'm not the only one, this is a majority of opinions out there, but this is the role that Ryan Reynolds was born to play. <laughs> right. uh, I know oh, yeah. this will be like the fourth uh, superhero movie that he's, he's been involved with, if you count the Blade, uh, the third Blade movie. Right. Um, you know, Four times a charm with this mother effer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have to say effer. I could have said the the actual word because this is the red band trailer. It so. is. All stops are off. Yeah, but this is uh, this is if you if you watch it, and we talked about this a little bit last night. Uh, if you watch the original animated short that was, uh, you know, pirated from yeah. Comic Con. Yeah. Right. This was this was this is movie was made at, I think specifically for fans. You know what I mean? Like oh, this yeah. is not it's 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 just made for the fans. Kind of like the the last Star Wars was, and that's highly respectable. Absolutely. I'm really glad Ryan Ryan Reynolds, I believe, is also a, a, an executive producer or a producer, not an executive, but a producer. So you know he's been talking about playing this and getting a true you know adaptation from from his perspective for I think five years or something like that. Something crazy. Don't want to make this. Yeah, I think they got it. I think they got it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Story wise, one of the things I like about this trailer. I mean, we kind of have an idea of of what we're looking at story wise with his, you know, uh, Marina Bacar. I can never say her name right. Bacarin. Yeah, Bacarin. Uh, being kidnapped. I mean, he did say that. Um, one of the things I did like about her character, from what you could see, is that she goes, you know, I've played a lot of roles, but damsel in distress isn't one of them. I'm kind of glad that we don't have this, like, weak, real frail, whiny, pissy, crybaby crap that we have in a lot of the other movies. We've got a strong female role opposite. And, you mean, like, Mary Jane Watson? <laughs> oh, God, yes. Exactly. Or Bella Swan. <laughs> you didn't see that one coming, did you? Nice. Nice tie-in. Nice tie-in. Nice tie-in. Anyways. <laughs> but, uh, 
you know, as far as a story and a cast, you know, we we don't know a lot, and some of them are new, but everything seems to fit perfectly. That is correct. We're talking about the cast, like you you already uh, mentioned the <laughs> yeah. the actor and just the look alone of uh, Colossus mm-hmm. is pitch perfect. I mean, he oh, looks yeah. like the mirror image of the action figure I had when I was seven. You know, straight out of the X Men animated show back in like exactly. Uh, the one you used to play in the arcade and everything. Right. Pitch perfect. Indeed. Indeed. Pitch perfect. And then Reynolds, I mean, I, like you said, the guy was born for the role. He was made for the role. He is Deadpool. There is nobody else that could have pulled this role off. And, and even though we haven't seen the movie yet, in the trailers and, and even in that movie that was called an X-Men origin movie that he played Deadpool and they did something stupid to him at the end, still, he was... He was Wade Wilson. It, it was yeah. It yeah. was spot on. Right. Yeah. His the his, the choices he made with the character were perfect. The choices a studio made with the character is a different story. But that's not his fault. You Indeed. know what I mean? Indeed. And I love I love how we talked about this a little bit last night. How just in the in the in the uh, the first trailer they're poking fun at Green Lantern. You know when they say mm-hmm. don't make the suit green or animated. I mean Ryan Reynolds is not. Uh, ignorant to you know the criticisms of you know no, X Men, yeah. the Wolverine, or Green Lantern. Again, if you look at Green Lantern, Ryan Reynolds' performance was not the problem. It was, no. I, in my opinion, it was the studio. Again, uh, he he did a great job. I think as Hal Jordan, or you know, I don't have any complaints with what he did. No, oh, no, it's Fox took another story and screwed it up just like Fantastic Four. I mean, it's. There's- that is correct. Get yes. out of the superhero movies, Fox. Get out. Do you even know what you just said? Well, they're doing okay with X-Men. Yeah, well, let's, let's pray that they keep the right people involved. But that's, that's fucking Brian Singer. I don't like that Indeed. kind of talk. Yeah, keep Brian in charge and keep the executives drunk and tied up. <laughs> that is correct, yes. Indeed. Um, visuals. You know, one of the things we kind of talked about last night... Um, Visually, the, the the way this is shot, one of the things that I liked is that no one scene feels like it's a cookie cutter of another. Um, you definitely feel like they each have their own uh, kind of uh, atmosphere and, and and life to them. Especially the scenes where he's he's tied up and and they're doing all the work on him. They're very dark and and dank and, and mysterious and then you know you go all the way out to the freeway scenes and it's bright and everything and it's not sterile and whatnot and it, right. it, it, it feels like you're actually following him around his world and you're not just per se like some movies stuck in um, a kind of a one-dimensional feel as far as visuals and everything and everything looks shot well. The slow mo looks awesome, uh, especially on that 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 scene in the, on the freeway where he shoots all those guys in the head in a row. Uh, yeah, I mean it, it it's it's spot on. Yeah, and it, it's even more impressive. Like we've already talked about. Again, this is the director's debut at directing. Exactly. I mean, obviously, there's a cinematographer behind it as well, but I mean, yeah. make no mistake, the director is the main one that has the, sh- the, sh- the shot set up. You know, I want this angle, I want this kind of lighting. So, yeah, the sp- cinematographer is responsible for capturing that image, but the creation and composition of that image is mainly, you know, the director of photography, but all of it is inspired by the director. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just as impressive uh, as, you know, this doesn't look like his, his debut film at no. all to me from what we've seen. No, this this looks this looks very polished, very very well done. Uh, other than what's that... Al- mm-hmm. What's also just as impressive, we talked about this last night, but if you watch the full, uh, the full Comic-Con panel that they had this past year, 2015, um, you know, everyone, just like Star Wars, the director would have directed this movie for free just because of how big of a fan he was. So he was talking on the actual panel that there were some times where he would get <laughs> he would get emotional and he would like start crying because of how like I don't know the studio gave him the go ahead to do something he really wanted to do that he right. didn't think he could. So he'd get like moisty eyes and, and uh, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds would be like shut the f up you pansy or something like that just in character. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like That's dude, even more bring it back. It's like bring it back, yeah. bring it back. Now we're getting to the point where just like 
you know, Singer is a huge Star Wars f- or a uh, huge X Men fan. Uh, fan obviously JJ is a huge Star Wars fan as well as this guy. Right. You can tell from an audience perspective who are the real fans and who who aren't. So like Martin Campbell, I think he was the one that directed uh, Green Lantern. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem like he was a fan at all of the material. It seems like he was just a director for hire. Oh yeah, yeah, he was just someone to shoot, you know, to to shoot out a movie. Here's another superhero movie. Oh, people will come to it, and we went to it, and we left, and we were pissed. That's correct. Another good comparison is Joss Whedon with the Avengers. It's obvious he was a fan. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Look at what he. Look at what he's made of that that whole series and all those movies, and then you know the Russo brothers coming in and taking care of Cap, and and then uh, Kenneth Branagh, what he did with the first Thor. I mean, these people were, you know, they they gave this a lot. Of, they paid homage to it. They treasured it. Right. And uh, you know that's that's gonna make fans because I mean comic book fans, superhero fans, folks, we get a little wow, we get a little raw when it's not the way we want it to be. Um, but <laughs> channeling my inner thug. Sorry. Uh, speaking of uh, music, you had a great point on music. Yeah. The music was pitch perfect. So, like, we talked a little bit about this last night. I know your thug just came out a little bit. It, everyone turns into a gangster when DMX comes on. It doesn't matter if you're, like, an <laughs> older Chinese lady driving a car. <laughs> if DMX, you know, X going to give it to you comes on, everyone starts, you know, put their, oh, their yeah. left hand at the 12 o'clock center on the steering wheel, you know, start doing one of these. Oh, and then, like, that, that whenever, you know, yeah, they, they give you a little bit of the, the salt and pepper at the beginning, and then... Man, when they dropped DMX, it was just like, dude, that's that's so, that feels like it should be so Deadpool, like something he would listen to when he's fighting or something like that. Do you remember? How well do you remember the short film, the animated short film? I remember. Okay, was he was he playing DMX in that? He was listening to something at the beginning when he was sitting on there in his earphones. What was that? Do you remember? I think it was Salt and Pepper. Okay. Yeah. The the the, the marketing. This is I don't. I don't See that? I don't know. It could be that could actually be in the movie. If it's not, again, the marketing, the choice of putting DMX in both trailers, and the fact that they right. parallel each other because there's a lot of parallels between the first trailer and the second trailer, which yeah. I think is brilliant. You know what I mean? If you look at a lot of a lot of movies today, there's so much. The the trailers are so different. You know what I mean? Like the 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 first trailer, Man of Steel, or. Uh, Batman v Superman, the second trailer. Yeah. The first trailer of Age of Ultron was completely different than the second trailer. Right. I think it's really smart to make them parallel because that way you're giving us a good, honest feel for it, but you're not giving away too much. It's consistent. The music is one of the most important ways to do that, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, kind of what you, what you were mentioning about the trailers, is they're not letting too much of the cat out of the bag. And... And, and hence ruining the movie and, and all that. Like one of the things we were talking about is, is when he and Weasel are talking back and forth and uh, and uh, they had all those comments and you you had a good point that I, I want you to, to, to you know to, today Junior to today Junior I know I'm gonna play that sound there I can't get the cat out of the bag you had a good point you made and I kind of wanted you to go over it okay so like there were a lot of funny jokes that T.J. Miller says mm-hmm. uh, I hope it'd be cool, like if we watch the special features of Blu-ray, if we find out if any of those were like improv, because C.J. Miller's, Miller's funny as hell. Oh yeah. If you want stand up, he's he's hilarious. And before I before I say my point last night, you should watch you Mitchell Tech right. You should watch. There's a there's a he went on Conan O'Brien to promote Deadpool. I don't know if you've seen this or not. Okay. It is fucking hilarious how he promotes this movie. <laughs> there it not, is. We got one. You should you should watch it. <laughs> uh, I don't want to tell you anything else, but T.J. Miller, Conan O'Brien, Deadpool. Watch it right after this. Uh, but right. what, I, what, I, what I said last night was... You got your you homework, the, folks. If you watch the difference between what T.J. Miller says when he's making fun of Deadpool in the first and second trailer, they're completely different. I hope that what's in the actual movie is either a lot more than what we've seen or different. But I hope they save the funniest ones last. Like, I hope those aren't the funniest parts of that scene. I hope they do that the whole time, all the dialogue. I have a feeling that they probably will, just because of how genius the marketing's been so far. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, 
those were some of the best parts of the trailer is, is TJ Miller and Ryan Reynolds going back and forth on how he looks. Yeah, that I, I did, that's one of the things that, and I said last night, I liked the first one better. I liked the first one a little better just because I liked those jokes in that scene better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cougar. I was like, oh my god, that's perfect. And I, I love, I love the back and forth he has with that blind old lady where she goes, "Smells like what? Smells like old old lady pants in here." And she's <laughs> like, "It sounds like you have a dick in your mouth." It's like. <laughs> like this is gonna be great this is gonna be uh, hilarious I, hey. ho- I hope i hope those are in there but i hope they keep adding to them like i hope mm-hmm. those are just like the the iceberg as far yeah. as the jokes yeah that, that it's yeah a lot of movies do the things some of the best parts are what they show in the trailer the funniest parts and then finally when you get in the movie it was like that's it see yeah. that's the thing there's it's always possible until we see it but you have to consider how genius they've been so far and creative Right. I mean, it was a creative, so. Ha! <laughs> got he! Ha! <laughs> <laughs> we got one! Oh, we got one. It's an official trailer break, folks. That's how we know it's so, a good one. So, yeah. That's how we know it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> you look so defeated. Ah, <laughs> oh, good times. Good times. <clears throat> All right. Um, anything else you want to mention before we uh, give the verdict? No. No. <laughs> it's just there. We have it. All right, sir. Well, what is your verdict? Mm. Okay. So when I said this wasn't a perfect trailer, no. the, there's there's literally for what they were going for. There's, mm-hmm. there's one thing. For what they were going for, this could be perfect. Just like the Jungle Book, just like Suicide Squad, just like Star Wars. They're all their own animals, and they're perfect for that style. Right. There's one thing that this both of these trailers were really lacking. But Well, I guess there's two things. For one, and I talked about this last night, the lack of action isn't it's not huge and epic as opposed to like the Avengers or Batman v Superman. But mm-hmm. like I said last night, I wouldn't want that because it's smaller, but it seems a lot more intimate. You know, the one-on-one sword fight as opposed to, like, a huge alien army coming down or, like, you know, Superman yeah. shooting the Earth's core out of his ass, whatever. <laughs> uh, I right, like that. Right. So that's not really a, a downside. But what this trailer, both of them are missing is a awesome, like, amazing money shot. <laughs> but, you know, there's something at the end you're like, Yes. It's like the final button. They should have pushed like a final like mic drop. That's the only thing that if they would have had like something awesome, mm-hmm. I don't know what it would have been, but uh, in the in the first one, in the first red band, when he says, and he hails the smoke from his gun, he says, I'm touching myself, that could be considered. That's another game. Well, I know better. When he says, I'm touching myself tonight, I was like, yes. What a perfect way to end the trailer. <laughs> this one... I didn't see a, a uh, like a, a mic drop moment at the end. You don't, but you yeah. don't, you don't feel like the uh, the part to where she says, uh, where he says, "God, I pity the uh, guy who pressures her into prom sex." You don't think that was, was a good mic drop? It was funny. It was okay, but not compared to the first one, and not compared to. Definitely not compared to the first one. I thought the first yeah. one when he said, "I'm touching myself tonight." I thought that was perfect. That made me laugh my ass off. And then, <laughs> if you look at that in comparison to like the other trailers that we've yeah. seen, you know, like X Men, uh, you know, Suicide Squad, Star Wars, it is, in comparison to those, it didn't really hold a candle for me. Okay, those are the only things. So, with that in mind, my final score is a nine point five. Oh, nine point five. All right, all right. I, uh, you know, I was, I was worried that they were going to PG-13 the hell out of this thing. And after seeing the Red Band trailers and all the other trailers, uh, my mind is at ease. Uh, It is Ryan Reynolds. He is Wade Wilson. He is Deadpool. They have given them the creative freedom. They've given them the freedom to make this, which last night it came down, this movie is rated R. So it has an R rating. That is the smartest thing that they could have done with this movie, if you ask me. So, given all that and everything that the muse said, 
It's a 9.5. Suck it. <laughs> 9.5. I mean, it. everything looks spot on. Um, I mean, it. it's not necessarily quite 10 world changing, though the fourth wall breaking down kind of thing is, is close to it for me. It's a 9.5. Alright. Alright. I agree. All right. Anything else? No. And I just... I'm dizzy with anticipation from that. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, folks. Well, there you have it. The first Red Band trailer. Three Geeks Flicks trailer break for Deadpool. It's coming out February 12, 2016. Very close. Very around the corner. Um, if you have the time, check us out on Facebook, Three Geeks Flicks. Or also, of course, on YouTube where you find all this, Three Geeks Flicks. It's dead. It's dead. There's nothing on it right now. There was a blog spot. It's not there anymore. It won't look back. At the moment. Yeah, you better include that. You better include that. You'll see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm waiting on it there, Juan Pablo Matoya, with your most interesting man in the world beard going on. Right, stop that. Silly. Hey, it's taken me two years to grow this. Two years? It's quite dashing. Quite. Um, folks, leave us a comment, give us a shout out, like, subscribe, let us know. We'd like to do this for a living someday. Spread the word. Uh, other than that, I am the Tech Mitchell Wright. That is the Muse, Justin Kyle. I want to thank you all for tuning in again and being patient. Until then, stay tuned to the glow of those monitors. So we're going to catch you next time. Good night. Hey. Spearhead that. We're gonna throw it against the wall, see what sticks. I have like a fat roll, don't I? I have like a fat chin. Alright, you ready? No. Are you already recording? Yes. <laughs> you recorded me singing that bagel song? <laughs> I did. Ah. Uh... God, I'm getting old. What? Yeah, it was kind of something like that. Uh. She had to pick me up off the floor. I'd soiled myself. It's pretty bad. Can you say this for me right now? I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I prefer to say it. How does it look? Does it look pretty good? It's filling in nicely. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I like how you're leaning in the lights. Oh. <laughs> He's big. Oh no, here we go with this again. Very big he is right now at this moment. He's huge. What have you been patting? Alright, cool. Alright. Later. Call you in five minutes.